video coverage of IT Expo is brought to you by Content Boost, the content marketing specialists. Amplify your sales today. Hi, Eric Lenask here. Uh, we're in Miami, Florida for IT Expo 2014. I'm talking with uh, Dustin Walper from My Planet Digital today. Dustin, thanks for joining me. Thanks for having me. Uh, so, you know, one of the things, it's uh, early on in the uh, show week still, but um, you know, one of the big trends that people are already talking a lot about, as you can imagine, is, is mobility, uh, largely driven, obviously, by the, the uh, app ecosystem and the mobile device ecosystem uh, systems out there. Um, but really, there's so many different kinds of applications out, out there, and one of the things that you just mentioned to me are, uh, is a sort of uh, major trend that we're seeing, uh, sort of the battle or the face-off between native apps versus web apps. What are you seeing? Right, what we're seeing is that, uh, you know, in browser applications are becoming much more capable over time. So all the things that you used to be able to only do natively, you can now do in the browser. Mm -hmm. WebRTC is a great example of that. WebRTC gives you a full stack to do real-time communication, peer-to-peer, -peer, audio, video, data transfer. It's basically taking much lower level network stack capabilities and bringing it up to the browser. And that's really, really cool because that's something you never could do before. You always had to have a plug-in, right? You had to write native code mm -hmm. for whatever device you were on. That's just one small example of where the browser is becoming the platform of choice to the point where the operating system doesn't matter anymore or is mattering less and less. Um, and as computing power increases, you know, that will become the trend that I think will begin to dominate. Is there a difference between the two uh, fundamentally in terms of user experience and, and does it matter to the user, whether they're using a native app or an in-browser app? It absolutely does, and that's where I think there's a caveat in that if it compromises the user experience, you should not use web apps for the sake of using them, right? If you think that you cannot provide an experience that is great, do native, and that's still okay. Right? But I think the browser is getting to the point where we can have pretty much parity between native and browser-based development, and you can have that same user experience. You can already create uh, native-like applications using HTML5. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's all the way there yet. I think you know Facebook had this whole trial period where they created an HTML5 app, mm -hmm. and the adoption rate was kind of poor. It didn't work the way they wanted it to. But that was like a year, year and a half ago. And things are advancing so quickly that I think with the next one or two generation of phones, and then you know <laughs> other connected devices as well, like fridges and whatever you want to screen on, uh, I think they're going to be much more capable and able to actually render that experience in a really fluid way. So, so how much you know you. you mentioned the, the next uh, range or the next couple ranges of devices. How dependent on the device itself is the, uh, the user experience in a web-based app? I'll give you a very concrete example. Try scrolling through a document on iOS on mm -hmm. your iPhone versus scrolling through a document on Android. And even like the latest generation of devices are pretty good, but go back one generation mm -hmm. even. And you'll see what's called the industry's uh, jankiness which is it kind of doesn't work the way you would expect it to. Sometimes it lags a little bit. It doesn't exactly track to your thumb. Um, and that's one area where it, it seems subtle, but it really impacts how you perceive the device. Right? And that's one area that different platforms are still very, very different in terms of capability and focus on fluidity and, and ease of use. Do you think that based on some of the things you've said, do you think HTML5 is, uh, will be the platform of choice going forward? I think that it certainly has a lot of growing up to do. And it's more, I mean, HTML5 and JavaScript are the two sort of pieces that work hand mm -hmm. in hand. Uh, JavaScript has gotten extremely capable, um, and now you can use it pretty much for everything if you want to develop you know, server-side applications or you want to develop stuff in the browser. But where I'm seeing, and what we're seeing as a company is, you know, client-side, JavaScript-oriented HTML5 applications are creating really, really good experiences in today's browsers and will only get better over time. So I think that's kind of, that's kind of where things have to go, um, but there's still, I think there's still a lot of improvement that can happen. How, does, uh, how do capabilities uh, brought about by WebRTC change or enhance uh, the capabilities? Well, WebRTC is really interesting. Uh, we're using it uh, for some of our customers and some of the products mm -hmm. that we're working on, uh, specifically because it removes this whole issue of vendor compatibility from the mix. So let's say you're using video conferencing, and you're wondering, uh, well, we've got a Polycom device needs to talk to a video device, needs mm -hmm. to talk to a Cisco device and everyone writes stuff for their own platform, their own ecosystem, right? They don't want to make it compatible with the other guys. WebRTC gives you a full stack that allows that compatibility, um, and so you don't have to worry so much about what's going on under the hood. In the simplest case, peer-to-peer, -peer, you don't need any infrastructure, right? You just need two browsers that can connect to each other. But then in the more complex case, it removes that issue of compatibility, and so it allows 
anyone to talk to anybody, regardless of where they are, what hardware is facilitating it. I think that's really, really exciting. And then beyond just things like video conferencing and audio, our uh, possibilities unlocked by peer-to-peer -peer data sharing. You can never do that in the browser before now. And it enables things like peer-to-peer -peer gaming and peer-to-peer -peer file transfer that you could do in native applications like Skype, but never through browser applications. And I think that's where it's going to start to catch up to you know, traditional desktop or native experiences uh, that, that we're used to. Sounds like what you're saying is that WebRTC will help uh, almost level the playing field. I think that it will uh, definitely start to move things in that direction. I mean, if you look at, I don't think the playing field is ever going to be completely leveled because the browser is many layers of abstraction above sure. na in native development stack, right? So mm -hmm. you're never going to get exactly the same experience. But I think it's getting to the point where it's going to be good enough that it won't make a lot of sense because it's so much easier to develop for the web. And you don't have to worry about compiling for you know, 10 different devices with 10 different form factors um, across a whole range of ecosystem. Excellent. Uh, Dustin, thanks so much for joining us. I'm Eric Ask here in Miami at IT Expo. Video coverage of IT Expo is brought to you by Content Boost, the content marketing specialists. Amplify your sales today.